Hello and welcome to EGM 702, Week 3, Part 3, Band Maths. So in the previous lessons, we've discussed different ways that we can enhance individual bands or individual images. But we can also add, subtract, multiply, and divide different bands in order to enhance the differences between them. For example, if we look at our plot of spectral reflectance as a function of wavelength for different surfaces, you see here we have the wavelength range for visible blue, visible green, visible red, near-infrared, shorewave infrared, shorewave infrared 2. So these are for the different Landsat bands. And what you can see here is that for vegetation, we have relatively low reflectance in the red bands, so this is for conifer meadows, lawn grass, and oak, relatively low reflectance here, and very high reflectance in the near infrared. So for most plants, most chlorophyll producing plants, the near infrared reflectance is going to be much greater than the red reflectance. For most other surfaces though, you might notice that the near infrared and the red reflectance are either about equal or maybe there's a drop going from red to near infrared. So for snow and ice, we see here uh, a drop. We see that concrete is about even, weathered basalt is about even, and ocean water is about even with a little bit of a drop from red to near infrared. So by looking at the difference between the near infrared and the red, we might be able to, for example, highlight the vegetation. So if we take band differences using this example, this can help us to highlight the differences in reflectance. So you see here our value of zero where the two bands are equal, going up to values of plus or minus 10,000 because these are Landsat 8 bands. These are 16-bit images, so 65,000 something or other different uh, possible values. So that's the explanation for the big numbers here. Okay. So what we can see in this is that water, as, I, as we discussed, has a fairly even value. Uh, if you look on this map of Ireland here, uh, you can see the area uh, representing uh, Derry, London Derry, Belfast, Coleraine. You can see that those values are fairly low. There's not very big differences. And then for most of the countryside, you can see that there's very high differences. So we have much higher reflectance in the near infrared than in the red, and that corresponds well to the amount of vegetation that we might expect to see. However, taking band differences is subject to different constraints. For example, we might be dealing with topographic effects. If we have images where there are shadows, then we might not be able to very nicely compare the differences over here to the differences over there, again, depending on the presence of shadows. Similarly, if we have differences in solar illumination uh, between different images in different seasons, then we're not going to be able to compare them as easily by using band differences. So we might want to look at other options. One of those other options could be taking a ratio of the different bands. So here, because the differences in illumination can hinder interpretation, Again, because of things like shadow, seasonal differences, aspect and slope can also cause differences in illumination within an individual scene. Uh, slopes that have an aspect that is pointed towards the sensor are going to be brighter than slopes with an aspect pointed away from the sensor. Um, so we want to try to minimize these differences. And we can do that by taking a band ratio, because here we're getting the relative difference between these two different bands. And so this is again the relative difference of the near infrared and the red. So this can reduce the influence of scene conditions, which means that we can potentially use this to look at variations across, uh, across seasons. Uh, it also enhances the spectral differences and it provides again the relative intensity. Um, so it's something that we can compare both within the scene as well as at other times of the year potentially. 
We have a number of different sample applications for this. So we can look at the ratio of the near infrared to the red to help us uh, look at vegetation. We can look at the ratio of the two different shortwave infrared bands uh, from the Landsat sensors to look at, for example, differentiating between land and water, or to look at differences in soil moisture. We can look at the red and shortwave infrared ratio to help map snow and ice. We can take the ratio of red to green to look at different vegetation classes, because if you remember, uh, from our spectral reflectance slide, um, our different vegetation classes, oak, conifer, um, and uh, lawn grass had differences, had significant differences in the green and red reflection. Um, the pattern was the same, but the, the variation was, was quite different. Uh, we can also use the shortwave infrared, uh, the ratio of the shortwave infrared to the green to look at differentiating between forests and croplands or between land and water. So how do we go about selecting band ratios? Well, the goal that we have is to maximize the differences that we're seeing while also minimizing the redundant information. And there's a, a technique called the optimum index factor uh, that was first proposed by Chavez et al. in 1982. And this just looks at the ratio of, for your set of bands that you're looking at, um, you are taking the sum of the standard deviations of those different bands, and you are dividing by the sum of the correlation coefficients between those different bands. So you're trying to um, take, you're, you're taking the ratio of the variance within the bands to the, um, to the sum of the correlation um, so how you're, you're trying to account for potential redundant information between those different bands. Another option uh, is using something called the Sheffield Index, which takes the determinant or the magnitude of the covariance matrices. Um, and so what, what you're doing there is, again, you're trying to maximize the variance that you see between the different bands in order to, to figure out which bands that you might use to, to look at your ratios. You can also look at the spectral reflectance curves, like what I showed, and you can, depending on which different uh, surfaces you're trying to classify or you're trying to study, you can choose your bands based on the spectral reflectance curves. To summarize, Band mass or arithmetic operations can help us to enhance the different land covers that are present in an image to help us identify them. They can help minimize taking ratios of the bands can help minimize the environmental effects as a result of either topography or season. And selecting the bands depends on which bands we select depends on the application. So you might check the spectral signatures uh, as a way to, to figure out which bands you might want to try looking at. You could look in the Tempfli et al. Um, textbook chapter 5.4 or Jensen chapter 8 are two great places to, to read more about this. Um, and then I've included the links to the different papers that I've referenced here, Chavez et al. 1982, Sheffield 1985, and then a, a further summary of these different methods for selecting bands uh, by Boschema and Fung, 2001. That's all for this lesson. I hope you found it interesting, and if you have any questions, please post them in the discussion forum on Blackboard. Thanks. Bye.